Well, hello, lovely listeners. Uh, today, I'm having a conversation with the lovely Pin Chair. Hopefully, I've said chair right. I guess it's open to interpretation, but yeah, she's nodding. Um, Pin is uh, an ex-corporate badass, her words, not mine, and, um, and is now a personal development and career coach. And I know that she's accredited with the Jay Shetty coaching program. And obviously, Jay Shetty is a very well-known um, personal development coach, used to be a monk, you know, all of those things, now lives in LA, which does surprise me. But anyway, maybe uh, Pin can give us a little bit of light on Jay. Um, Pin, Pin is in um, Hong Kong. Um, that's where you're from originally, yeah, Hong Kong. Is that right? From Germany. Oh, you're actually from Germany. From Germany. Okay. And um, her passion lies in working and coaching with corporate professionals and high performers so they can achieve even greater success. She empowers people to unlock their professional and personal potential and creates an intentional, meaningful life that lights them up. Yeah, music to my ears. Um, Pin herself was stuck in her own career um, before becoming a coach, and I'm sure she's going to talk about that um, a bit further on. So welcome, Pin. It's uh, an absolute pleasure to have you. Mel, thank you so much for having me, and thank you so much for the introduction. That was all spot on. Thank you. <laughs> No problem. Um, just a word of caution. Um, we're, we're suffering a little bit of delay, so that might come out um, in parts of the conversation, but we're gonna, we're gonna soldier on, aren't we, Pim? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> right, so um, I would love to know more about Pin. really. You know, you, I know you did really, really well academically and um, I guess there were some sort, some sort of expectations from that uh, education, like we all do when we're younger and we tend to fall into things or think we should do things and it's all for the wrong reason. So I'd love to know more about the younger pin, um, obviously how you got into the corporate world, what that looked like and, um, and how you moved into the Jay Shetty coaching. So um, over to you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you for the question. Yeah, so I grew up, uh, I was born and raised in Germany by Hong Kong Chinese parents. And from a very young age, um, I wanted to climb up the corporate ladder. I wanted to work in multinational companies. And uh, I ended up um, studying international management and business Chinese mm. because um, the expectation for my parents was well, either you study law, uh, medicine, or business. Well, something, a, a useful major that you can earn a lot of money. And um, so that was that was the expectation that I got from my parents. Uh, when I was younger, I actually wanted to study psychology mm -hmm. because I was always so fascinated about the human mind. But yeah, regardless of that, um, at the end, I studied international management and business Chinese. So I studied that 2011, I graduated and I finally um, got my bachelor's certificate um, by the end of 2011. So I bought a one-way ticket to Hong Kong because all the big companies, they, they all had the head office in here, especially, especially German uh, corporations. So I applied, I worked uh, in different fields in different roles and I really climbed up the, the corporate ladder. So really according, to my dream. And um, in 2015, I moved to Taiwan to pursue my MBA, even to, to accelerate basically my, my career in the corporate world. And then during that time, um, I thought, well, I have a little bit of holiday. Um, I go for backpacking to around Southeast Asia. So it was a solo backpack tour. And I was exposed to all these beautiful spiritual places, so spiritual pagodas, temples. I saw monks there. I, I felt like a whole new world open, open up to me. And um, yeah, and then I remember when, the, when that was over, I, I moved to Hong Kong. I again worked in the corporate world. Uh, as a sales as a sales manager, I was um, sitting in my cubicle job, uh, looking at Excel spreadsheet from nine to five, and somehow that kind of work didn't really align with me. I felt 
there got to be something more to this world than just sitting in, in my little cubicle and reporting some um, Excel spreadsheets to my upper manager and not really in, making an impact and having a purpose. What, what was the job that you were doing? Um, so the job was like, I had to do a lot of Excel spreadsheets, like finding, finding clients for our services, but everything in, a, in an Excel spreadsheet. Mm. Uh, I just found it very meaningless. Mm. Um, what I wanted to do is, was to create an impact, to have a purpose and to help other people. But um, yeah, so it was all subtle. That feeling of, I want to create an impact all became very uh, subtle until this one point in 2019. So I was in a relationship with, uh, with a girl at that time. And um, well, she broke up with me and all of a sudden I felt like, why is this happening to me? I wanted to have a family. I wanted to have a good stable job where I can climb my way up the corporate ladder. But when she broke up with me, I felt like a foundation was taken away from me. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I had a little bit of an identity crisis, a crisis in 2019. And at that time, I discovered Jay Shetty just randomly on YouTube or on Facebook or on, on Instagram. And I saw some of his videos and this one video where he talked about having a purpose. It was so resonated with me that I said, I can't do this work that I'm doing right now. It doesn't really fulfill me. So fast forward, I, I, um, I enrolled for a Jay Shetty certification course. It was a coaching course. And that was the first time where I felt so alive, a, a work that really touches my soul and my heart and really creating an impact in someone else's life. I never thought that I could have that kind of feeling. So um, yeah, so I quit my job uh, in my corporate career. I handed in my resignation. Uh, resignation letter and I started my own coaching business coaching mainly corporate professionals who are lost and stuck in their career and to empower them to create a meaningful career with more purpose fulfillment and alignment amazing it's not as simple as that though is it it's not as simple as just quitting the job and then having a coaching business so and you mentioned Jay Shetty so is your coaching business solely Jay Shetty's work or are you running your own sort of programs and doing the Jay Shetty stuff as well? Yeah so all the methodologies that I've learned is the Jay Shetty methodology like he has like a Jay Shetty ABC framework which I'm also using in my in my coaching is a little bit different because um, my niche is a little bit different so I'm coaching mainly um, corporate professionals who are lost and stuck in their life. So his coaching framework can be applied to, to anything, to burnout, to um, um, well-being, relationship problems, where you want to have a better relationship with your partner or with yourself. But mine is more about career clarity. So I know that probably wouldn't have been cheap to do that either. Um, what, what, from a purely... Um, uh, personal perspective here because obviously I do coaching um, yeah. how does it work when you've got the accreditation is it I know that you're self-employed and you go off and, and you've, you've got that accreditation but is it a case of do you have any sort of restrictions in terms of what you can do being a Jay Shetty accredited practitioner or are you sort of free mm. to, are you free to do what you want to do I'm free to do what whatever I want to do. Uh, my limitations are that I'm not a therapist. That was, uh, that was taught uh, at a very early stage uh, to know the differences between a coach and a therapist. Mm. Um, but other than that, I'm free to do whatever I want to do. I could also call myself, um, let's say relationship coach. Yeah. But, my, but the niche that I uh, chose was career clarity. And that's because you feel you've got enough expertise in that. Yeah, because I, I, I can totally relate to the pain points that corporate professionals are having because I've been in their shoes. I know how it feels like to wake up 
feeling drained, having that Monday morning blues, Sunday night blues, uh, where you just don't care about the work that you're doing and really sitting in that pain. I totally relate to that. So that's the reason why I've chosen that particular field. So what did it actually look like? You said you obviously put your letter of resignation in. Um, had you already, did you sort of go full in or did you start the coaching while you were still working? Yeah. Yeah, at the beginning, um, because I was I was very scared to just quit my high paying job because it gave me a lot of security, like financial mm -hmm. security and just security in general. So what I did was I wanted to do the two things at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I also hired a, a business mentor because I know how to coach people. But what I what I really liked was okay, how do you make it a thriving business actually? How do you how do you live with your coaching business? So um, that, was, that was the main question that I had. So I was schooling, I was asking some of my friends and they recommended me one. So I signed up for his mentorship. And, but very soon I've learned, I can't do this uh, at the same time. Like I have two options now. Either I go full in with my, with my coaching business because this is something that I believe and I should give 100% or I just give 50% to my dream. So after thinking and thinking and thinking, I decided to go, no, you know what? I go full in right now. And now I'm going to my manager. I'm preparing my re uh, resignation letter. And now I hand it to him. And how did that go? That, was a, that was a process. Um, I think he didn't quite understand that. <laughs> <laughs> my manager, my manager didn't quite understand why are you quitting your high paying job you have you have a career here and um yeah but I said well this is my passion project my passion is to unlock other people's potential this is what I want to do this is my purpose so after explaining it to him he he understood it and then he said okay I wish you I wish you good luck so we um so we said goodbye in good terms, uh, no hard feelings actually. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it took some time actually to really to go to him um, and to get, to get over that fear and to really take the leap of faith and to give up my, to give up my job, my, my income. But as soon as I made the decision, I said, no, I have to now be fully 100% committed to my coaching business. A commitment to myself actually. And how did your parents react, given what you've said about their desires for you to have the right academic, you know, the, the right major and all of that? So how did it go down with them? Yeah, um, they didn't quite understand that. They didn't even know what was coaching. Right. And in, 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 Asian, in, in the Asian society, because my parents, they, were, they grew up in, in Hong Kong. I grew up in Germany. So for them, it's like, well, coaching, is it like therapy? Uh, you, you know, like people shouldn't talk about that, uh, talk about mental health issues. So it was always a taboo topic in, in, in the Asian context. So when I told them, hey, I wanna quit my job and I want to go in 100% fully committed to my coaching business. Yeah, they, they couldn't comprehend that. Um, but at that time, I was like, no, I, I have to do this. If I don't do it right now, I will regret it for the rest of my life. So eventually they said, uh, okay, then do it. Wow. Kudos to them then. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> at the end of the day, they just want you to be happy, right? Regardless of anything else. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, they come from a different different generation and from a different cultural context. Mm. So I understood I understood their concern, but at the same time, I need to know okay, what's best for me? I have I've thought it through. I know I wanted it. I even hired a mentor, and um, there was no turning back for me. So how did it look? So you you handed in your letter. You went full in. Where did you find your clients from? Was it like instant or was it, mm. um, you know, a bit of a struggle? What happened? I don't know if you get much support through the Jay Shetty organization in terms of clients. Yeah. 
um, yeah, it was a little bit of a struggle at the beginning. So that's the reason why I hired a, a business mentor because I didn't know how to get clients or how to reach out or how to even craft my message. Like, what is my client avatar? What is my hero story? So all of that, I didn't even, I, yeah, I didn't, I couldn't even articulate that. So the Jay Shetty has its own program. It's called the MBA um, business, business MBA. But I didn't take that course. I had my own business mentor. So at the beginning, I was struggling with that. And then after I got my mentor, he said to me, well, you have to reach out. You have to do the work. Reach out to people on LinkedIn. Uh, reach out to people on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, on podcast, like um, matchmaker.fm. And he said to me, this is how you get more exposure, awareness. Um, and really, and this is how it helped, having collaborations. He said to us, the main thing people come to you is when you, when you give out content, when they know your story, when they can relate to you, and um, when you make yourself visible. And this is what I did. It was relentless work. I worked at the beginning um, like 12 hours a day for four months straight. Yeah. Just it was doing, a lot of work. Just doing content and reaching out to people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wow. that must have been a little. Um, yeah, having done it myself, um, y you feel sort of quite lonely, don't you? And you, and if you're not getting much back in the earlier days, it feels like you're just every, you know, you're just pushing out all the time without getting anything back. How how did you cope in that mm. process? Yeah, that's a good question. Um. For me, it was really the uh, the support that I had from the Jay Shetty from the Jay Shetty course. Uh, we are a community of about like 1,000 1, students. Mm -hmm. So when you are having your downer, like because that happens sometimes, not everything is like oh everything is exciting, positive. Sometimes you really have those moments of yeah, where you're doubting yourself a little bit. Like, is it the right thing? So, um, so what really helped me was when I was writing in the community and I said, I need some support. Yeah. I, I think I got like 20 messages. Hey, um, maybe we can have a Zoom call or, or they send me a lot of encouragement. Hey, don't give up. Uh, keep going. You can do it. I know you can do it. So that really helped when you have that community of encouragement. And the second thing was, um, I was actually reading a book from Gabby Bernstein. It's called The Super Attractor. Yeah. It's, it's a very spiritual book because I gave myself a lot of pressure actually. Um, like, oh, I should have uh, so and so many outreaches. That should be the outcome by the end of next week. And when it didn't happen, of course, you're a little bit disappointed. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of felt, Mm, okay, now I'm having a little bit of an anxiety. So um, yeah, so I purchased that book. I read that book like, I think within one week I, I finished that book because I so related to that book, to that content. Mm. It's, it says like, when you expect so much, if you try so hard to get something, it does not come. It's only when you are at ease, in peace and relax, then it will come to you. And when I read that, I felt a sense of calmness. Not that my coaching business was like, oh, I don't care about that anymore. But it was more like, okay, I wish, I wish what I want, I manifest that. And then it will come to me. It's just the, having the faith and the hope. And yeah, and that, this is what really helped me actually the most. Wow. So, because I, I, know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Been there myself. And um mm it's really hard when you're in that I mean I you know I've read Gabby's books um I very much into energy um I'm a Reiki healer myself and mm. you know and I want to I want to get more into the energy work um I, I follow various people that are really going into the energy work and and then there's a girl I don't know if you've heard of a girl called Rosie Freya uh she's a coach she coaches coaches um 
and she she talks about you know if you're in the wrong energy you know she's very successful but she's done launches where she it's it's given her nothing back and she got into that yeah. spiral of anxiety and what the hell am I doing wrong and all of that and when you're in that state it's really hard isn't it to to take a chill pill and and go oh okay right mm. let, let's let go of all this you know stress and let's just yeah. let's just be open and let's just have faith um so how long do you think it you know from reading Gabby's book and from resonating with it all how long do you think it took for you to be able to really sit in that space and and then things started to change mm. Mm. I think one and a half month at that time I also had another coach who was coaching me because we always say coaches have coaches yeah. And um, yeah, she was coaching me about that. I was telling her well, some of my anxieties and the fear that I had. So we talked about that. She coached me through that. And then on top of that, I was reading, uh, I was reading her book and also from, um, from another author, The Seven Spiritual Laws. Um, ah, I forgot the name of the author. That also really helped me to get calm. So all in all, all in all, I would say after, yeah, after one and a half, one and a half months, sometimes I do still have that, um, that, that negative, uh, not that negative, I wouldn't, I'm not sure whether it's the right word, the negative energy, but that energy of anxiety. Yeah. yeah. And when I was in Germany, I was in Berlin, I met with one of my friends and she became a spiritual coach or yeah spiritual coach so she's having a her own metrics like coach matrix coaching style or something so we did a session it was like over two hours so it's really about spirituality and uh, now she's my coach just to get even more karma to manifest that really what i want mm. and um wow well, she really helped me a lot she sounds amazing. Oh yeah, she's amazing. If she hears that, she would be very proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> did did she um so the, the the matrix or whatever it is that she's developed, has she has she developed that herself or is that through a program or I think she went through a program. Yeah. Because her story really related to really related to me because she experienced a very similar experience. So she was in a, in a job that she, that she really hated. She, she didn't feel fulfilled. It was, everything wasn't right. It wasn't aligned to her, to, to her values. So, um, so she was having a little bit of a crisis and then she went to, to a coach. Then she learned all the, um, all the methodologies like me with Jay Shetty. So she had her own coach. And um, yeah, so she all she all takes what she've learned and applies to her to her coaches to her clients. So to me, oh, cool. It's very powerful, I have to say. To to go back to um, your sort of awakening, if you like, to spirituality. You said when you went back, not backpacking, but whatever. Yeah, whatever you did around Asia. How did that? Well, firstly how come your parents were in Germany if they were born in Hong Kong? Was it sort of work related that took them there? Because obviously you've been brought up mm. totally different to how they were brought up, I would have thought. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's an interesting story. I was asking my, my parents again, like how, how come that our family lives actually in Germany? Mm. So it was, it was during the time of um, the Great Leap Forward uh, under the rule of Mao Zedong. He was, uh, he was a dictator of, of China. And we had a great famine in China in 1960s. And my grandparents, they, they really suffered from, from what was going on in China. So they were farmers. Um, Mao Zedong's regime has taken land from them. So they needed to escape. And they escaped somehow in, in Germany. I think it was through a friend at the beginning. So, my, so one of their friends took them to Germany 
and offer them a job and then they build they build their life from there and then my parents were born uh, or my father was born there but my mother was living in in Hong Kong at that time and 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 then my my father met my mother in Hong Kong mm -hmm. and then they moved to Germany and then this is where my sister and I were born in wow. in Germany wow I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I love hearing stuff like that. Not that that was a nice time for your grandparents back in those days, but, you know, I sort of compare it with what's going on today, you know, in terms of the oppression that's happening in a lot of countries because of what's going on in the world. And I marvel and I'm astonished by the human spirit, really, you know, those people that just were like enough's enough we're out of here you know and they had the strength and the um, creativity to get themselves to another country so um you know and and you and your sister have had the absolute benefit of that haven't you oh yeah definitely because I, I i love hearing these stories as well because i'm very fascinated about history i've read all the history about china but to really hear from someone that have have gone through that mm. is like, wow, okay, how did it happen? Uh, what were these people like at that time? Uh, what was different than to now? So I'm very curious about that. Mm. So yeah, my my parents and my grandparents are very, very lucky. And I can consider myself as being lucky to be born and raised in Germany, having all these privilege, which I'm so grateful for. And um, thank you to my really to my grandparents for that yeah yeah amazing are, they, are your grandparents still alive uh, my my grand my grandmother uh, she has dementia and my grandfather yeah passed away about 10 years ago in germany mm. so yeah but my from my mother's side uh, they all live in hong kong um they all passed away already right okay and, and to go back to your travels around Asia, um, you said it was like a real sort of contrast when you got there and all of a sudden, you know, this whole new world felt like a new world. Can you tell us a little bit about that, you know, in terms of why, why the contrast was so big? Yeah. I think I, I was so free when I was in... I was so free when I was traveling. I was free in this in my decisions. I could say, well, tomorrow I want to go to Myanmar with my backpack. I just sleep in a hostel. I meet people from all different kinds of backgrounds, having a meaningful, inspiring conversations with them. And um, I've learned so much through through traveling, through through the people from places, speaking with monks, and I felt a sense of calmness there. Mm. And then I realized when I went back to, well, to the corporate world, being stuck in a cubicle, I don't have that decision making. I don't have that freedom. If I say I want to go to, I don't know, if I want to go somewhere else uh, to, to, I want to visit my client, then I need to justify mm. why do you want to go there? How, how much do you think uh, you can get in return? Oh, wait a minute. I need to get your approval for that, that you can actually visit the client. So I had a lot of restrictions. And um, the second thing was because I was just in my cubicle job, just looking at Excel spreadsheets, I felt it was so meaningless. I get a lot of energy from having meaningful conversations, inspiring conversations, learning and, and being curious and, and just, getting to know people's stories that fuels me with so much joy. So when I was sitting in my cubicle and just looking at on my monitor, it, it didn't have any purpose for me. It felt so empty. So um, that traveling really opened my eyes in an, and, and really realizing what my values were, which was, or which were, or which are still freedom and um, curiosity, learning, and the free and decision making, which I didn't really had in the corporate world. Yeah, yeah, I can totally relate to that. 
So if somebody um, is listening and, and wanted to, you know, liked what you're saying, how does it look like to work with you? What is it that, you know, who is your typical client if there is a typical client? Um, and, mm. and what's the sort of process that somebody could expect to go through? Yeah. So typically, a typical client who's coming to me is a corporate professional who is locked and stuck in their career and they want to have more fulfillment. They want to have more meaning. They want to have more alignment and, and more ease and, and feeling lighter in their career or in their life. So I would say these are typically people who are coming to me and they ask me, like, how can I do that? And it's really about um, what is the gap between where they are and where they want where, where they want to be. And what I normally do is evaluating or determining what is actually their value, personal mission and vision. What are actually their strengths? What are actually their interests? So I work with a lot of the tools, the Ikigai, which is a Japanese concept, the reason for being. Um, have you heard about that? Yeah, I've, I actually, do you know what? I've actually downloaded it um, and still not got around to reading it. So yeah, thank you for the reminder. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so really what's what excites them to get out of that? Like, where do they have a smile on their face? Um, what is it that they feel so drained? Um, but instead, what would they like to get out of that job? What is the impact that they want to have? What is important for them? But it really goes a lot about um, to articulate what is it that they want in their career? And then we really work towards the end goal, which is to have a career where they wake up excited, inspired, and engaged to go to work. Um, this is just one part. Even if you know all of that, you know your strengths, you know your values, you know your interests, but the, I always say there's this one thing that stops you from sometimes taking the leap of faith. And that was also my, one of my, um, one of my, how to say, um, yeah, concern, mm -hmm. which was the fear. First of all, it's to have the focus. And the second of all is to get rid of all the noises, which is sometimes really the fear and the anxiety, the fear of, the fear of judgment, the fear of the unknown, the fear of failure. Because a lot of my clients actually come to me and say, well, I know what I want now, but I don't know what's happening after I take the leap of faith. What if I don't succeed? And normally what we do, we, we work with a lot of affirmation and perspective change. Like how can you reframe that in a more positive way? Oh yeah, what what happens if you do succeed? Because um, because they're in this negative headspace of what could go wrong, or what should, or what is my family uh, thinking about me, my family, my coworkers, even my former boss. So uh, we also work around that. Cool. Cool. It sounds ace. It sounds very aligned to what I do. Um, you know, in terms of values vision, mission, purpose, um, very much so. So if people wanted to find you, Pin, where would they go if they want to find out more about you? Yeah, so I have a website. It's called pinchair.coach. My Instagram, pinchair852. 852 stands for Hong Kong. It's the, the country code. All oh, right. Uh, LinkedIn. Yeah. So LinkedIn, my website, as well as um, Instagram, mainly. These platforms I've been using, I'm using a lot. Yeah, okay. Putting a lot of content out there that help people. Cool. Um, I'll put that in the show notes as well so people can easily find the links. Um, and I like to finish these conversations with anything you feel called to say to the listeners, um, anything at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to start, start the year with a positive note that um, I do believe that the right career is, is outside 
And whoever's listening, um, please, please don't be stuck in a in a dreaded end job, soul sucking job that you that you dislike, that you wake up uh, feeling tired, exhausted, having Sunday night blues, Monday night blues, where you don't care about your job. I feel like life is way too short to be stuck in a in a job that you don't like or that you hate. Life can be so beautiful, and it's up to it's up to us to take that leap of faith because we do deserve a career that makes us feel inspired, engaged, and motivated to go to work. So this also applies to you. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Pin. Um, it's been a real pleasure to meet you. And um, I know the, the listeners will get a lot of value from this. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mel, for having me. It was a nice conversation. Thank you. Very welcome.